there are many types of spinal disorders. The most common types of spinal disorders are degenerative in nature. That means they are acquired with age. Commonly, degenerative disorders occur in the lower back or lumbar spine. They sometimes occur in the cervical spine or the neck. Common spinal degenerative disorders include spinal canal stenosis, lumbar spondylosis, cervical spondylosis, prolapse intervertebral disc, and even conditions such as spondylolisthesis. The most presenting symptom in a spinal disorder is that of back pain. Most of us will attest to the fact that we would experience some sort of back pain at some point of our lives. Majority of people, up to 80% of the population actually experience some sort of back pain. The most common area of back pain is the lumbar spine or the lower back. We would examine the patient to see if there are any signs of neurological deficit, if there's any muscle weakness, if there's any evidence of sensory numbness or any abnormal reflexes. The next line of investigation would be baseline imaging, typically x-rays of the lumbar spine or the cervical spine that would give you a good idea of how the bony anatomy looks like for the patient. If indicated, then an MRI of the lumbar or cervical spine uh, would be the next appropriate investigation. Back problems are often multifactorial and not one treatment would entirely remove your problem. It's therefore important to realise that you should be managed by a multidisciplinary team and here at the NNI we have a very good team of doctors and healthcare workers to look after your needs. This group or team of healthcare workers includes the neurosurgeon, the orthopedic surgeon, the rehab physician, the rheumatologist, the pain specialist, the physiotherapist, occupational therapist, and importantly, a dedicated nurse clinician to help educate and support you through your problems. In instances where the prolapse disc is moderate in size or severe and the nerve root compression very marked, then conservative treatment for six to eight weeks does little to relieve the pain. In fact, during this period of time, the pain uh, can be excruciating even with simple movements and simple uh, task that a patient, a person does in his, uh, limiting his, his daily activities. And therefore, a surgical procedure to remove this disc um, and to relieve the compression of the nerve root will go a long way uh, in relieving the patient's symptoms. And the patient will generally do very well with the surgery. All surgical procedures are not without risk. In spinal surgery, there's always the risk of damage to neural structures, Damage, damage to nerve roots causing paralysis in spinal cord problems or in high cervical pathologies. Pathologies, you're afraid of damaging the spinal cord itself causing paralysis. Over the last 10 to 20 years, uh, we have become better in what we do. Uh, we use the surgical microscope to give us better illumination. This certainly improves patient safety. By using minimally invasive techniques, we cut down the morbidity in so-called unnecessary tissue damage, this collateral damage. With intraoperative spinal navigation, we improve our accuracy in doing things. And in complicated cases, we sometimes use intraoperative neural monitoring to see if there's any undue uh, possible damage to important neural structures.